Hello students, in this video we'll begin our discussion with cross products of dyadic tensors and vectors. Let's be given the standard basis. of R3, and we've been using our delta notation, right? So I'm going to call it delta 1 hat, delta 2 hat, delta 3 hat for i, j, and k, right? Then we can form our diag tensors, our diadic tensors, have the form tau bar bar, which is the sum over i and j tau i j, and then like the outer product of basically delta i and delta j, right? So delta i, outer product with delta j, and those are my unit dyads, right? So those are the unit dyadic vectors, right? Those things are the unit dyads. There are nine of them, right? They look like i i, all the way down to k k, right? Like so. And what we want to do now is I want to use these unit dyads as a way to compute things in terms of cross products and dot products. So let's do that. So now let's consider or define an operation. Let's define delta i cross delta j delta k, like that. Okay, so in other words, I'm going to tell you how to do the cross product of a standard basis vector with a standard unit dyad vector, okay? So by definition, what will this be? This is going to be by definition delta i cross delta j in the direction of delta k. Now let's recall how I do delta i cross delta j. Delta i cross delta j is the sum over L of epsilon i j L delta L hat, and this is times delta K. And so this is an outer product of two vectors now, and so the outer product of two vectors is going to be the sum over L, epsilon I J L, delta L hat, delta K hat. And that's how I cross a vector with a dyadic tensor. We'll use linearity now to do the rest. And let's do it in the opposite order. So what would I get if I had this? If I had delta I delta J, I did the cross product in the opposite order, because we know that order matters when we do these, these operations, so the order is going to matter. So if I first do a dyadic tensor, cross a vector, let's do the same calculation over here. This is going to be what? This is going to be delta i, and this is going to be delta j cross delta k, right? And then I have a delta j cross delta k hat, like that, okay? And so this is going to be delta i, now I'm doing a right multiplication, delta i hat, and then I'm going to have a delta, the sum over l, the sum over l, and then what we have next, we're going to have an epsilon j k l delta l hat. And what will this be? And so now this is going to be what? So this is going to be exactly just the sum over l of epsilon j k j k l. And then delta i delta i hat delta l hat like so. Okay, excellent. So now I have these operations, so now how would I extend these operations by linearity, right? So let's do two, those two examples. And so if, for example, we would like to do this, let me do V, let me do V cross tau bar bar, right? So in other words, a vector dot cross a dyadic tensor. Well, what will this be? This is going to be the sum over I, let's write out very formally, right? The sum over I of VI delta I. And then we'll cross that with the sum over J and K, J and K. And then we'll have a tau j k. And then we'll have a what? And then we'll have a delta j hat, delta k hat, like so. And now we can use our rule. So what does our rule tell us? Our rule tells us I'm going to sum over all these things. I'm going to sum over i. I'm going to sum over j. I'm going to sum over k. And I'm going to sum over l, right? We're going to have a vi, vi, and then a tau j k. And we have a delta i cross delta j. Delta i cross delta j is epsilon i j i j l, and then a delta l hat, and then a delta k hat, right? And so this is our expression for the vector across the diag tensor. Let's do the opposite order and see what happens. If we were to do tau bar bar cross v, that would be what? Now again, let's practice with our indices. I'm going to do i and j over here, because remember the indices are dummy indices. And then we'll have a tau ij, tau ij, delta i hat, 
delta J hat, and I'm gonna cross this with what? I'm gonna cross this with V, which is the sum over K, the sum over K of just VK and then delta K hat over here, right? Again, we'll have these three things over here. We're gonna sum over I, J, and K, I, J, and K, and L. And then what's left over? I'm gonna have a VK, VK, a tau IJ, and then I'm going to have a delta J, delta K crossed, right? So those are gonna give me an epsilon what? An epsilon J, K, L. And then what will be left over here is I have a delta I left over from the first thing over here, and then the delta, and then the epsilon J, K, L induces a delta L, delta L like this. And so now, of course, by comparing these things, we see we have a completely different algebraic structure over here. So an important note, so note, both V cross tau bar bar and tau bar bar cross V are dyadic tensors but not equal. And so now, of course, what this allows us to do is that this is what we can do now is I can basically take these identities and then try to incorporate match, mismatch identities, two delta identities, all sorts of identities for these levi shavita symbols over here, these epsilon JKLs, and so recall what these things are. So just for reference, just as we didn't state this before, so recall, of course, for those of you who don't remember these levi shavita things, epsilon IJK is equal to zero if there's repetitions, so it's going to be zero with repetitions. have repetitions. It's equal to one if this permutation over here, I, J, K, is an even permutation, and it's negative one if the permutation I, J, K is an odd permutation, right? In other words, what this epsilon, J, uh, what this epsilon I, J, K does is it basically puts the signs into a three by three determinant that basically correspond to a plus in the one one entry, and then that will oscillate based on the other entries over here. And so this levi shavita symbol is important when we're doing determinant calculations, or in particular, we're doing curl calculations, right? So this thing pops up all the time in terms of something that has an alternating sign. It also forces the indices I, J, and K, or I, J, and L, or whatever the indices are in the levi shavita symbol to be distinct, right? If, there, if there's any two repetitions in the levi shavita symbol, you get a zero, right? So in other words, it's helping you put signs into determinant calculations and it allows you to use very sort of quick index notation and quick index algebra to get lots of really beautiful properties and really very important properties of determinants in terms of cross products of different things like vectors and diadic tensors or diadic tensors and diadic tensors or the full monty of different tensors of different orders. So this gives us an example of how we can incorporate previously defined terms in order to help us understand these diadic tensors better. Thank you very much.